everybody, and welcome to Phone Dog Live. I'm Sydney from Phone Dog. Uh, if this is your first time here to the broadcast, or if your first, or if it's your first time watching the recording, uh, basically this is. It's four o'clock. That's my clock telling me what time it is. This is just a broadcast where we talk about a couple of topics that have been in the news lately that are cell phone related, obviously. And uh, if you have any questions that aren't necessarily related to the topics then we'll address them. I'll have an open Q&A at the end of the broadcast. Obviously, if you're watching this on Ustream, I won't be able to see the questions, but I'll be checking those, and um, then I'll try to answer them later on. I'm sorry, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching the recording, I won't be able to see those comments, but I'll be watching, I'll be checking those comments later on on our YouTube channel, so you can uh, leave those. So, anyway, we'll get started. First of all, I'm glad everybody, everyone could be here. Uh, let me set the topic at the top. I will also be on Facebook, and I will try to remember to check those comments every once in a while, even though I usually forget. I apologize. But anyway, uh, so let's get started. We have a couple of moderators, so they'll be taking care of, of all the random comments and everything, so you guys don't have to worry about that. So, the first thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, it kind of makes sense, Google I.O. is this week, and uh, so a lot of news on that, and uh, later on we'll talk about, we got some more information on uh, the AT&T and T-Mobile deal, and then if we have time, there were a couple of interesting um, Apple news tidbits that I want to get to, if we have time, I don't know, I want to save time for the open Q&A, but anyway, first of all, Google I.O. was this week, and uh, if you're like me, one of the first things, I've always wondered this about Google I.O. What the heck does I.O. stand for? And, you know, I decided to Google it because I'm thinking it's probably something really obvious that I should already know, but I didn't know, so I decided to Google it anyway. Uh, so I did Google it, uh, Joseph Input Outputs. That was what a lot of people guessed because, you know, it's it's mostly a developer conference. I think a lot of people forget that because a lot of times we see, you know, new hardware or a new version of Android, but it's actually a developers conference. And so a lot of people say um, the developers give their inputs, things that they need or want, and then Google creates a product or a version of the OS as the outputs and basically the answer to their input. But um, Apparently, Google has actually made a statement on this, and they've said that it means innovation in the open, kind of denoting that Android is an open OS, and so they make innovation, and it's just out there for everybody to use. So kind of interesting, not really important. But anyway, the two main things uh, that we saw, we saw a couple of interesting things. We saw some Chrome OS notebooks. Uh, we saw the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Everyone at the conference got one of those for free, which I was really jealous because that's actually the one honeycomb tablet that I'm really looking forward to, but whatevs. Anyway, um, but we also saw the new version of Honeycomb, Honeycomb 3.1 or 3.1, whatever you want to call it. I hear it both ways. And uh, we also saw the, a couple of, we heard about a couple of the things that were going to come with the next version of Android, uh, which is going to be called Ice Cream Sandwich. They didn't exactly tell us what number that would be, if it would be 2.4, or if it'd be 2.5, or 4.0, or what. So we're not really sure. I have a couple of theories on that, but we'll get into that later on. So, uh, first of all, Android 3.1 Honeycomb. This is, it brought actually a few really big uh, improvements and features. Visually, it's still going to look pretty much the same, and so you might not really notice the improvements that it brings. But really quickly, just if you've been like living under a, a rock for the past week, I'll tell you kind of basically what, uh, what the new version of Honeycomb is going to bring. An improved task switcher, resizable widgets, uh, Google TV will be getting Honeycomb and the Android market this summer. Uh, also, it will bring uh, smoother screen transitions, uh, some new features for customization, different themes, and uh, uh, also USB support. So those are the main features. The one that I'm most excited about, and you guys, you know, feel free to comment on this on on Ustream. I'll be checking, obviously, I'll be checking those comments, and then on uh, 
Facebook. I can see there's already some people there. So hey, everybody on Facebook, glad you're here. So the thing that I'm most most excited about with the new version of Honeycomb, I feel like I'm being really bubbly, like a 15 year old girl or something. I don't know. I think I just calm down, take it down a notch. Okay. The thing that I'm most excited about is uh, the resizable widgets. And I'm going to tell you why, because when I first saw Honeycomb, and if you guys watch this broadcast or if you watch the recording of it every week, you know that I say that I'm not really so hot on Honeycomb. Um, I like I like the idea. It's, it's a completely new visual experience, and I think that's super cool that Google did that. Super cool. There it is again. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I think it's really nice that Google did that and, and kind of changed everything, but... You know, for me, I was like, ah, it's kind of, it has that stock feel to it, that the widgets are just there, and you can't really change them at all. I mean, it's nice that, like, the Gmail widget is scrollable. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, the books widget, you can flip through and stuff like that. But they're just kind of there, and, you know, what if I don't like the way it looks or the size of it was, was one of my few problems. And so when I saw the resizable widgets... It was like the heavens had parted, and it was like, oh, because they just completely heard what I was what I was wanting. Because now, you can have the Gmail widget take up half of the screen if you want to, if if you need that, or you can have the the widget for your um, your web shortcuts take up you know a bigger chunk of the screen, which to me makes sense because. For one thing, more usable, you know, Gmail, say I want to look at more than two email web, emails at one time on the list, you know, that makes sense. I can look at 10 if I want to. But also, you have so much screen real estate. I mean, a lot of these tablets have, you know, a 10-inch display, a 7-inch display even is is huge compared to a phone with, with a 4-inch display. And so you have all this screen real estate and then this little tiny widget I'd have to have 30 widgets on one home screen just to take up one home screen. I'm given like, what is it, five? I mean, it's just, it was too much space and, and it was just too little. The widgets were too little. So resizable widgets, I think, um, is a huge thing. And that I'm really excited about. Also USB support. I mean, obviously you can use that for, you know, mice. You can connect a mouse to it. Keyboards. Uh, they even had game controllers. In the demos, they had game controllers connected to a Honeycomb tablet, which obviously, again, you can instantly see the uses for that. Um, and I think, you know, more than just, okay, I can connect a mouse to it, you know, more than just that, it opens up new possibilities for, you know, form factors themselves, not just what the end user can do with it, but what manufacturers can do with it. We've already seen the ASUS ePad Transformer that has, you know, a connectable laptop dock and it makes it sort of like a netbook. And so, you know, if you kind of take that sort of a step further, now you have all those USB ports already on, you're, you know, already supported with the tablet. So, you know, kind of new horizons in terms of, in terms of form factors. And then, of course, um, the increased, the, 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 the performance enhancements, and the transitions improvements, um, those are obviously going to be awesome. This is a nice thing about, about live webcasting is that, you know, usually when I do a video and a review, I can cut out all the times that, you know, words don't come out of my mouth in right, pretty ways. But in live, you, I can't do that, so you just hear all of my awesome mistakes. It's so cool. Anyway, so that's Honeycomb 3.1. Um, USB hosting, oops, I'm late, don't worry about it. I like how they announced that thing where all devices are to get all updates for at least 18 months. Just missed her saying what I.O. stands for. Oh, I.O. Um, I googled that, and Google says that I.O., what did I say it stands for? Or what did they say it stands for? Innovation in the open. That's what Google says. Uh, I could really go for an ice cream sandwich right now. Me too. And, oh, I'm way behind in the comments. Okay. Uh, she's way up there. Yeah, I know. I, I sometimes it doesn't scroll down all the way. Anyway, and so uh, that's Honeycomb. That's Honeycomb 3.1. Uh, I see a couple of questions on Facebook that are sort of related to. We're going to have an open Q and A at the end of uh, at the end of this broadcast, the last 15 minutes. So I see your question about the G2X and the Droid Charge and the Incredible Two. 
I'll answer those in the last 15 minutes and you can ask, you know, basically any question that you want. So that's Honeycomb. Uh, I'm really excited about it. It's coming now to uh, basically any tablet that's on the market, which isn't that many. I think the Motorola Zoom and the uh, the G Slate and then the uh, the um, Galaxy Tab 10.1 that everyone got that was there. That I don't think is getting it yet, mostly because that tablet hasn't actually been released yet, so it's not necessary to push it out, but it'll get it pretty soon. But already the Zoom is getting it. Uh, we also saw, so the next thing that we saw after Honeycomb was Ice Cream Sandwich. And this one, this is the big one, because it solves a lot of problems that people have been talking about. Uh, I'm talking about, talking about fragmentation, and also also the problem of updates, which someone mentioned uh, in Ustream. I think it was, actually I'm not sure who it was. So basically, you know, Ice Cream Sandwich is, is another update that's coming um, to Android. But Google has said that they want to make, their new slogan for Ice Cream Sandwich is one OS everywhere. And actually I have a picture of the logo for Ice Cream Sandwich, just in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, so here's a picture, and I think it actually looks pretty cute. Um, I like it, Ice Cream Sandwich. So their theme for uh, Ice Cream Sandwich is one OS everywhere. So this is going to be the universal operating system that, according to Google, they're going to, it's going to work on, on anything, everywhere, on phones, on tablets, and everything in between. So we won't anymore have, you know, at least according to what they're saying, we won't anymore have a specific version of the OS for tablets and a specific version for phones, and then like everything in between that has like all different kinds of versions and weird stuff. It's all going to be just one operating system everywhere, a universal OS. And this is big, you know, one, because that's one of the strengths that iOS has. Um, you have an iPod Touch, it uses iOS. You have an iPhone, it uses iOS. You have an iPad, it uses iOS. And not only is that really great in terms of, you know, you already know how to use a product, but it just makes compatibility and syncing and, and transferring and it just makes everything simpler. Not only that, um, but it will also solve, in a way, it will solve the problem of fragmentation. You know, we won't have all these different versions floating around for tablets and phones. It'll just be one version and it'll work on every phone. So speaking of fragmentation, Google WebOS, interesting. I like, I like that concept. Anyway, so speaking of fragmentation, Google also talks about that problem and how they're going to tackle it, which, you know, it's about time. Um, they said they've partnered with several different carriers and manufacturers, AT&T, LG, and you know, other carriers, and uh, they formed this alliance, this partnership, to ensure that new phones will receive updates for at least 18 months after their release. So, you know, up until now, it was kind of up to the manufacturer if they wanted to send out that a release to a particular phone. So, you know, we have the, the Behold 2 and you know it was sort of getting old but it wasn't that old and some people said well it's not too old to get an update but you know Samsung decided it is too old but then you have another phone that may be like the G1 and it got updates forever you know so finally they have you know a phone is going to get updates for at least 18 months which is over a year which is going to be nice additionally and this is like the best part Additionally, from now on, Google will dictate guidelines on how long it takes for a device to be updated, which is yay, because, and I don't even have to tell you why that's a problem. I mean, you know, HTC gets their updates out like that, and Samsung, you know, it takes them a year and a half. Um, and Google didn't specify, you know, what those specific guidelines would be, you know, or how they would dictate that. I mean, obviously, there was a lot of talk a while ago about, you know, if Google was going to do that, then they couldn't actually be a fully open operating system because now they're going to start telling carriers and manufacturers what to do, and that's that's not open and that's not free. Um, but apparently, they figured out a way to do it, and you know, more power to them. Uh, if I have to sacrifice a few, 
you know, openness features, then I'm okay with that as long as as long as devices can get updates. And obviously we know that whatever it is that they had to change, or maybe they didn't have to change anything, but if they did, you know, their goal is to still be open. So they're not gonna change their entire philosophy, um, you know, just for one thing. I love how we're not even paying attention to Sydney. I noticed that there's like this whole conversation going on in the in the comments in Ustream, and I'm just like, carrots, rice ball, and Voxy. I don't what what is that? Anyway, but it's okay because people on YouTube they can watch it later on if they're recording and they don't even see you guys' comments. So anyway, don't worry about it. Um, so what was I talking about? Ice cream sandwich. Um, it's gonna be big. It's gonna fix a lot of problems. Uh, and also, you know, just really quickly in terms of, you know, visually what it's going to bring. Um, it is going to have a lot of the same features that Honeycomb has. So that holographic UI, the new launcher, which by the, by the way, the new launcher that I was talking about, I didn't really go into that. Right now, uh, the launcher, whenever you bring up the multitasking launcher, it just shows you a few of the most recent apps that you've been using. But now the new launcher will show a complete history of all the apps you've used. So you can scroll through it. It'll be as long as as long as you want. Um, and then you can close certain programs if you want to take it off that list. So that will also be coming to Ice Cream Sandwich, um, the holographic UI, multitasking UI, and richer widgets, which are those resizable widgets. So um, again, you know, going on that it's a uh, universal OS, so not only is it all going to be compatible, it's all going to look the same. And uh, one other thing that I forgot, um, in, terms of, in terms of the different form factors and making this a universal OS, Google uh, has said they realize that Android is available on several different devices with tons of different form factors. So in order to, as they say, insulate developers from the differences between all of those devices, they'll be adding new APIs to the framework to help scale all the developers' UIs across all these different form factors. So the developer basically will be able to design an app and that app or you know widget or whatever it is will be able to reconfigure itself to optimize for the available space, whether it's on a phone like the Xperia Mini Pro that has like a 3 point or a 2.1 inch display, or if it's on a tablet with a 10 inch display, or you know, a phone with a 4.3 inch display, it will automatically resize itself so the developer doesn't have to, you know, make all these different changes and versions. It'll just be a lot easier. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm excited about about ice cream sandwich. I'm excited about the resizable widgets in Honeycomb, and I think it really makes me kind of appreciate Honeycomb more and, and want a Honeycomb tablet. I've kind of been holding back because I didn't really like the way it looked initially, but then Ice Cream Sandwich is also just going to be huge for Android in general. You know, not just, you know, the end user and what, what, it get, what you get or how it looks in the features, but just for Android in general, I think it's going to be really great. So um, those are the main things in terms of cell phones uh, that were discussed at Google I.O. Uh, we also, they um, announced Google Music Beta. Uh, it's not in its official form yet. It's still in beta mostly because they couldn't complete their record label negotiation. negotiation. So basically it was going to be like a cloud music player where you could download songs and buy songs and also store your music. But um, they couldn't they couldn't get all of that worked out with the record labels. So as it is, um, it's mostly just kind of like a digital locker and kind of where you can store your information, but you know basically optimized for music files. So it's in its in its form right now. Um, it's not really that interesting, but um, it'll get better. Excuse me, I need to, I need to take a drink. Sorry, my throat gets messed up sometimes. So, um, and that will also, there's an app that you can download to your phone. You can't actually use it right now unless you get an invitation from Google, um, which I think everyone at Google I.O. got an invitation. But as it is, the app is out there and the idea is out there, but you can't actually use it unless you get an invitation, which is, I don't know, 
it's whatever. Um, so if you get an invitation, yay for you! I haven't gotten one yet. I submitted a request like as soon as it was announced, but um, and also you know speaking of Google Music Beta, I was uh, I was you know doing research and just kind of getting a recap of everything that happened at Google I/O, and uh, I read this interesting article on Engadget, uh, which I'm not really sure if. Sometimes, like, I don't know if I can trust sites because certain writers and editors are kind of more prone, like iOS prone, and some are more Android prone. So I'm not sure if the person that wrote this was entirely unbiased, but just for the sake of an argument, you know, we'll say that they are unbiased. Um, but they brought out a couple of interesting, a couple of interesting things that could sort of be a problem. For example, uh, you all of your music that's on your computer you can upload to this you know online digital locker uh, which you know for one just kind of initially the idea of uploading all of your music if you have like you know 2,000 songs it's gonna take a while to upload but also you're gonna be streaming that music so if you have um, you know, it's going to take a significant amount of data in order to do that. So if you're on a tiered data plan or you only have a certain amount of data that you can use and you're going to be using Google Music on a regular basis to listen to your music as you would normally, uh, you're basically going to burn through that data pretty quickly. So, you know, for the time being, for heavy users, it may be best to still have, you know, your music on your phone and then maybe have some of your music in the cloud. Um, you know, that may change. Google may have a, a fix for that. You know, I don't know. Um, also, uh, another thing to consider since it is streaming, um, Signal, you know, if you have a poor 3G connection, obviously that's not going to work very well because streaming music, if you have a poor 3G connection, is going to be choppy or it might just not load. Um, so that's, again, another thing to consider. So. There's a couple of things that, you know, this article brought out that I hadn't actually thought about whenever it was first announced. I was just thinking, oh, yay, a digital locker, and then all my music's up there, and I have to worry about it, and it's all awesome. But when you started thinking about it in real-world use, there were kind of some problems. But anyway, that's Google Music Beta. I actually wasn't planning on talking about that, but it just it just happened. So, um, yeah, story of my life. Um, so, Honeycomb 3.1, Ice Cream Sandwich. I haven't been looking at you guys' comments at all. Again, a little half-baked. I don't know what that's about. Sprint all the way. Who was it that wrote it? Voxy is supposed to be Stewie. I thought for sure she was going to pull out a bottle of Jack D when she said she was going to have a drink. <laughs> uh, you guys are not on topic at all. And I just talked to the moderators before the stream started to try to keep it on topic. But anyway... I'll let you guys slide. So that's that's that. That's Google I/O. And uh, again, I'm on Facebook. I can see you guys' comments about uh, the Inspire, and uh, then I missed another one about the Evo. Um, but I'm gonna get to those comments in the last 15 minutes of this stream. I have a couple of of set topics that we're gonna discuss. So uh, next topic. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is we got some more info on the AT&T T-Mobile merger. Um, this was, you know, a big deal. We talked about it, I think maybe last month. It was one of the topics that we had and we discussed it and, you know, you guys voiced your opinion. For the most, pe for the most part, people are very against it, against it and don't really like the idea at all. Um, but anyway, so it went before the Senate and, and, you know, and basically to see if it was something that they could actually approve or if it would cause a monopoly or if it was just, you know, bad all around. So uh, we got some reports on what some of the senators had to say, and it doesn't seem, uh, doesn't seem like it's good news for AT&T. Um, Here's one quote that I thought was interesting. Uh, one senator said that by approving this deal, AT&T would have to cut thousands of jobs because it's a merger, so you know they're not going to need everyone. So they cut thousands of jobs. 
But they refuted that. They denied those allegations and said that it would allow the company to hire additional workers because of the fact that it would give AT&T the opportunity to roll out its 4G LTE network, which also, positive, would improve their service to their customers. So they're saying, no, we're not going to cut jobs. We're actually going to hire more people and we'll get to roll out our 4G network so it's you know improved service for our customers, which is really what we're all about anyway, you know, service and quality and all that jazz. Well, Senator Herb Cole, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Cole, he um, basically just cut through the crap and he said, this is a business deal to make your company more successful and more profitable, that we should discuss it in that context, not that this is in the national interest. So, strong words, but... It, you know, when you look, when you basically boil it down to what it really is and cut out all the fluff, I guess that's basically what it is. Um, also, a, you know, at and is talking about how it will allow them to roll out their th their 4G LTE network. Um, another another spokeswoman said at and is planning to spend $39 billion on this merger, money that could instead be spent investing in this network and bringing better service to more Americans. So, you know, she's basically saying, uh, this is a woman, um, what's her name? Gigi Son. She's with Public Knowledge, which is a consumer rights group. So she's basically saying, um, you're taking the easy way out. You know, you're running out of spectrum and your network is clogged. And so instead of using the money that you have wisely to either, you know, they're running three mobile technologies on their network right now. They're basically just using their spectrum just at will and not being really careful with it. She says instead of doing, instead of just getting more spectrum, you could use that money to, you know, act a little more wisely and cautiously with the spectrum that you already have um, and be more efficient with it. And so that's a good point, too. And I talked about this. The first time that we talked about this merger, um, I said, you know, on the one hand, I understand AT&T needs more spectrum. Everybody knows that AT&T's network is is just in a bad way right now because it's, it's clogged. The iPhone just brought too much data. They couldn't handle it. So they just don't have enough spectrum and they need more spectrum. So I'm like, that makes sense. On the other hand, I understand and I agree that carriers and all carriers, not just AT&T, but that all carriers need to recognize that instead of simply acquiring more spectrum, they should use the money that they have to invest in technologies that will help them to make wiser use of the spectrum that they already have. And the government had, this is a perfect setup for the government to finally step in and make them do this because in the past, they've always just auctioned off more spectrum when it was needed, AWS bands, which were primarily acquired by T-Mobile. Those, that was spectrum that they auctioned off because they felt that there was a need for it. But, you know, at some point, that's not going to be an, op an option. Um, the spectrum is going to run out and someone is going to have to force carriers to be more efficient with their spectrum. And this situation is the government's chance to do that and set some sort of precedence. And so, um, I don't know, interesting points that were brought up. Um, by the senators and, and by the government. Sydney is so politically correct when she speaks. <laughs> well, you know, I have to be because if I in any way lean it in just in any direction, um, people are going to jump on it because I work for a news site. I'm an editor, and so it's my job to be unbiased. And so if I give any hint that I'm showing any sort of bias, <clears throat> even if I'm not, um, people jump on it, and so I, I try to I try to see both sides, and um, and I don't know I can I can I can see what um, what these folks women and men are saying, and so um, but we found out you know recently also this week we knew that if the deal didn't go through that um, that AT and T would have to pay T Mobile well they have to pay Deutsche Telekom Deutsche Telekom is what the European company that owns T Mobile so they'd have to pay them about three billion dollars, which is a lot. And they would also have to give up some spectrum, which is gonna be killer because that's the whole reason they want this deal because they need more spectrum. And now if it doesn't go through, they're gonna have to give up spectrum that they just don't have to give up. So, but now I find out that on top of the three billion dollars, once you add up 
all the other parts that deal with the spectrum and the other agreements that they didn't really go into a lot of detail about, once you add all of that up, it's actually going to end up costing AT&T about $6 billion if the deal doesn't go through. So that's a lot of money. Um, and, you know, initially, whenever it was first announced that, you know, there was this deal and everyone's like, no way it's going to work. And people are asking me, is it going to work? One of the things that I said was, this is a huge risk for AT&T. And I just don't think that they would risk that much if they weren't sure that it was going to go through. I mean, AT&T has lawyers. They probably studied the situation and, and thought about every, you know, past case that, you know, went before the courts. And, and they probably did research on everything and decided it's worth the risk. It's probably going to go through. At least, you know, that was my thinking. Um, you know, now that I know that it's $6 billion, that kind of just solidifies that theory. But then at the same time, now that I see what the Senate is saying, or, you know, what certain senators are saying, it doesn't sound like good news. So, um, and also, you know, most people, um, at least most of the uh, people that I've talked to, consumers, um, really don't like the idea of it going through. Although I will say that most of the reasons that people cite for why they don't want it to go through are completely unfounded. And if any of if anyone is watching and they're and they're you're using one of these reasons as to why you don't think it should go through, you know, pay attention because I've heard people say um, that AT and T sucks, and so if AT and T buys T Mobile, then T Mobile is going to suck. And you know, right now T Mobile has the best customer service around, and you know, the best you know like up there in terms of, you know, call quality and all that. I mean, not the best, but it's it's okay. So they're saying, you know, AT&T sucks and T-Mobile is going to suck. That is totally unfounded because the whole reason, if AT&T buys T-Mobile, they're going to have tons more cell towers. Both AT&T and, and T-Mobile will have tons more cell towers. They'll have so much more spectrum. It could actually only improve the service for both companies. So if that's your qualm, then, you know, don't, that's not a problem. It actually the opposite of that would happen. Now, in terms of customer service, I don't know how that's going to, you know, I don't know, you know, what practices they're going to adopt, but I'm just saying in terms of service, it's actually going to get better. That's actually, if, that's if it goes through and, and who knows. Uh, the customer service issue might go down though. Yeah, that's, yeah, what I was saying. I, I really don't know. AT&T is bleeding its customers dry, so I sort of hope the deal won't go their way. You could feed Africa with that money. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, you could probably do a lot with all of the money. You know, random fact, I, I once read that um, the United States produces 20% of the, of the worldwide amount of food. So of the food that's, pr that's produced worldwide, the United States produces 20% of it, and the rest of the world produces 80% of it. 80% of it, but in terms of consuming, the United States consumes 80% of the food worldwide, and the rest of the world has only 20%. I don't know if that's still true because that was a few years ago, but kind of interesting. Anyway, so that's um, the AT&T slash T-Mobile deal. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Um, it's interesting to see what what the government's going to do. Um, I'm I've been watching it, and um, I don't know. We'll have to see. So, um, see, it's four thirty three. We do have a few minutes. I want to talk about this. There was some, and I don't know if we reported on this on phonedog.com, but in reading the news, I um, read of a few Apple patents that have been you know, bought or requested um, by Apple. And then also some news that we just got about the iPhone 5. So let me set the topic on Ustream. So the, uh, the Apple patents, it was for this uh, type of keyboard. And let me get the, uh, let me get the document so I can say everything right. So it's for a type of keyboard. And basically the problem you know, anytime you have an invention, you always have to state the problem because, you know, if not, then there's no reason for it. Um, okay, 
So the problem that Apple presents is that keyboards are getting smaller and smaller, even though actually they're not. They're getting bigger and bigger, but whatever. Apple says that keyboards are at least smaller than maybe what people would like. So the keyboards are getting smaller and, you know, on a virtual keyboard, some people don't like it because, you know, you can't actually feel the keys. I mean, on a physical keyboard, I can feel the buttons, I can feel the keys, and I just feel safer with that. So Apple has this idea. Um, they described a system that would flow air from the input device, you know, through like openings in the, you know, touchscreen panel. And whenever a person, whenever a user touched the keys or whenever their finger got close to the keys, the phone would sense that and I guess blow and use air pressure um, against the fingertips to kind of give your finger the feeling of, okay, I'm pushing a button. Interesting idea, the air pressure to kind of mimic tactile feedback, um, which kind of begs the question of, you know, how are they, I mean, are they going to have to put holes in the touchscreen display? Here's a picture of the actual patent. Um, they have two ideas. So, you know, you can see the user pushing it. It's kind of complicated. So just basically look at the picture and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, you know, air pressure, you know, being, you know, flown through the display and then you can feel it. And then they have a couple of ideas. You know, this is another idea where the display would actually have a physical response or kind of press against your finger instead of just the airflow would actually be a physical tactile response. Um, interesting ideas, you know, and you guys feel free to comment on it. When I first heard it, I was like, I don't know, I mean, yeah, I can kind of see how that would be useful, but the first thing I thought was Apple just make a physical keyboard, okay? I mean, they're finding all of these crazy ways to get around a physical keyboard and the simplest thing, just, just add a physical keyboard to the iPhone, okay? That's all you have to do instead of, yes, turning the iPhone screen into a hockey, an air hockey table. I mean, you know, come on, just physical keyboard, simple. That was my first thought. My second thought was, that's never going to happen. I mean, which, you know, most of the patents that companies file, and especially Apple, most of them never actually get produced. But um, <clears throat> this, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's kind of interesting. So I thought I would bring it up. Voxy. What, why, why is, okay, Voxy is a person. And what's Voxy saying? So they want to turn the, okay, iPhone 5 better be a Star Trek tricorder if they plan on beating Android. 3.5 billion people. Okay. I kept, I kept, sorry, Voxy, I didn't mean to jump out. I just, I kept seeing people talking to Voxy, and I was like, what the heck is that? Sorry, that was my bad. I just, I wasn't keeping track. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> and, you know, this might not be Jack Daniels, but it could be some, some other sort of alcohol that's just clear. I'm just kidding, though. It's actually water. Um. Anyway, so... Yeah, the other thing I want to talk about, and I just only have a few minutes because I want to get to the open Q&A. iPhone 5, um, we have a new rumor for the iPhone 5, so if, you, if you're one of the million people that asks me every day of my life what the new iPhone 5 is going to be like, we have a new rumor that the iPhone 5 could be called the iPhone 4S, um, which is not, you know, highly unlikely because, you know, remember we had the, <clears throat> the iPhone 3GS, um, which, you know, could have been called the iPhone 4 because it came after the iPhone 3G. But since it was sort of just a minor upgrade, they decided to just call it the 3GS. And so that's what we're hearing could happen with the next iPhone. Instead of being called the iPhone 5, it would have just minor cosmetic changes, a better camera, and a dual-core processor, and just be called the iPhone, 5, the iPhone 4S. Um, S standing for speed, I'm guessing, just like the 3GS stood for speed, um, because it will have a dual core processor and it will also have HSPA plus connectivity. So 4G, but not LTE. So it'll have AT&T 4G, but it won't have Verizon 4G. So, you know, keep that in mind. And then we're also hearing that the iPhone 4S could come to both Sprint and T-Mobile. 
We heard a rumor a while ago, we saw out in the wild an iPhone 4 with T-Mobile 3G support. So you know, now we're hearing it again that it could come to T-Mobile, so this isn't too far-fetched. Coming to Sprint, okay, we already have a CDMA version, so this is sort of possible, um, but mostly I think what's more certain is that it's only going to be minor updates, you know, the better camera, and the dual core processor, and then being called the 4S. So um, that's what we heard, and actually, <clears throat> I, that just came out uh, before I saw the broadcast, so I haven't had a lot of time to do any research on that, but that's the news. That's the news. I like that. I like that slogan. That's the news. Maybe I should, maybe I should use that. Anyway, so those are the topics I want to talk about, and now it's everybody's favorite part, open Q&A. So we have about 20 minutes left. Um, the S stands for Sydney. Exactly. Um, so we have about 20 minutes left. If you have any question about anything, uh, feel free to ask, and I will try my best to answer it. Um, any phones, any release dates or rumors, let me get out my, uh, my document with all the latest news. That way I have all the updates for you guys. So, ask away. Uh, what happened to Noah? He defected. Dude, that's old news. Traitor. What happened to Noah again? He defect defected. Wow, this is like deja vu. Can I start? Yes, Stewie, please. By all means, somebody ask a question. Desire, Desire HDs in the UK getting gingerbread on Monday the 16th? Yes, that is not a question, but yes. The Desire HD in the UK will be getting 2.3. Uh, also, the Incredible S is going to be getting 2.3. That's not the Incredible 2 in the US. They're the same exact phone, just in the in Europe it's called the Incredible S. In the US it's called the Incredible 2. The Incredible S is getting 2.3. I'm assuming that also means the Incredible 2 will be getting it pretty soon, but we just you know haven't heard any. Um, dude, you've been living under a rock. You didn't answer my question. Well, somebody already answered your question. Best Android phone coming from the iPhone 4 in UK coming from the iPhone 4 in the UK. Um, honestly, I'm going to say probably um, the Samsung Galaxy S2. Uh, you know, for one, it's a beast of a phone. I mean, it's one of the best new phones coming out, and it's already out in Europe, actually. Um, but it has a dual-core processor, a Super AMOLED Plus display. Um, it ships with 2.3, I believe. Um, so it's an awesome phone. But also, TouchWiz, um, you know, it's very similar to iOS, so in terms of cosmetics, you know, you'll feel very at home with it. But then you also have the added bonus of Android and widgets and a better notification system. Um, there's a huge, okay, I am second then. Why are you guys doing a video, uh, when are you guys doing a video of the Xperia Arc? Yeah, yeah, I ask the same thing every time. Um, actually, we just had a first impressions article, I think Darren. Darren, was that you that did the first impressions article? I don't know if Darren is still here. Um, he has it, the Xperia Arc, and so I'm guessing he'll have a written review up. Um, my voice just cracked. That was awesome. I love it when that happens. Um, I'm guessing he'll have a, a written review up in about a week. Um, let me check Facebook just so I do not miss any. Okay. Infuse 4G or HTC Holiday. Holiday. Dude, I haven't even heard of the holiday. Where have I been? Have I heard of the holiday? Let me see. HTC. I heard about the holiday. I know what you're talking about. Um, but it's not actually... The holiday is just a rumor right now, isn't it? We haven't heard any solid info on that. Let me Google that just to make sure. HTC holiday specs. Okay, yeah, the holiday is, is very much a fringe phone. We haven't heard very much about it at all, so... It probably won't be out for a couple of months, so I would say, you know, go ahead and get the Infuse now. Is Ice Cream the Android 2.4 update? Google didn't actually tell us what, what Ice Cream Sandwich is going to be, if it's going to be 2.4 or, you know, 4.0. We don't know. Um, depends what holiday it is. Well, what about iPod Touch 5? Um, I don't think we have anything on that. No, I, we don't know much about the next iPod Touch. Okay, back to Ustream. USB hosting makes Android tablets a legitimate replacement for real notebook. Boxy, what do you mean? TouchWiz equals user interface palm. Hmm. 
I went into a phone shop a few weeks ago and saw the Xperia Arc, and it was a very, very nice phone. Sony Ericsson's have always had nice hardware. I had a K-something once, but the right version of Android and that UI was laggy. What is the best and cheapest phone Verizon Wireless? The best, okay, so BCB, do you want a smartphone or a feature phone? Um, since you said cheapest, I don't know if you mean like just cheapest phone overall or, you know, feature phone or smartphone. So clarify that, please. Um, that is the best one for replacing a computer, in my opinion. The Asus ePad Transformer, I want that. But I don't need it. It's like a productivity tablet, and I just, I don't need that, but still, I, I desire it. iOS is getting dull. Definitely smart. Okay, so smartphone. The cheapest, best smartphone from Verizon. Let me head over there really quick and get a list of their phones and the prices. Get an Optimus V on Virgin Mobile. I have it. Good deal. Well, the Samsung 10.1 Tab get the Netflix app. Um, that's right, the Netflix app was just released for Android. Now only certain phones can, it only works on certain phones. The HTC Incredible, the Nexus One, the Evo 4G, the G2, and the Nexus S. Those are the only ones that can actually run the Netflix app right now. When will other phones get the ability to do that? To run Netflix? I don't know. And when will the tablets get it? I'm not sure. Um, I'm assuming that the tab, yes, will be able to run it in the future. However, that's that's a guess, so don't quote me on that. Um, right, and back to Verizon smartphones. I'm still working on it, BC, you don't worry. Uh, Droid 3. Droid 3. I don't think we have very much info on that, but let me check. Motorola Droid Three, okay, don't have. Okay, the Droid Three. Um, so far, the only thing we kind of know about it is that it had a four-inch QHD display. Obviously, <clears throat> excuse me. Obviously, a physical keyboard and a front-facing camera. Not much info, but that's really all we know right now. I need to get another drink. My voice is just not working today. Okay. <clears throat> So, dual-core phones. Yes, they are awesome. Okay, Verizon. Sort by price. Okay, we have the Citrus, the Fathom, no. The Ally, no. The Vortex. Um, I would say the Vortex. Um, the Vortex is an Optimus One phone, and uh, I've tested three or four Optimus One phones, and they're very, very decent mid-range Android devices. They perform very well, no lag, no locking up. All the stuff that you would expect with a mid-range phone, you don't get. It, it performs very, very well. Um, so the cheapest, best phone on um, Verizon, I would say the LG Vortex. Looks like you can get it pre-owned for free. Um, and then... Let me see, just normal, not pre-owned, um, would be $80. So that's what I would say. Is that BCB who was asking that? I'd say the LG Vortex. Okay, um, but HTC Sense is not built for a tablet. Um, HTC, we just heard a rumor, I think today, um, that HTC is working on a new Honeycomb tablet, and it's going to be called, well, the, the, um, the rumor date, the rumor name right now is the Puccini, um, and it will have a new version of Sense that is optimized for tablets. So, you know, right, the current version of Sense is not really made for tablets, but apparently they're working on one that is built for tablets. Okay, do you know anything about the Merge? Because I really like the Vortex, but the Merge has the keyboard and Sense. Um, we just heard that the Merge is going to be released. Um, there was kind of all this sort of confusion about when it was going to be released, but I think we just got a date today. Let me see. Merge. I'll have to check on that because I didn't write, I didn't take the note down whenever I saw it. Um, also, by the way, the Droid Charge is finally getting released tomorrow. It was delayed for, I don't know, we don't even know why, but it was delayed. Um, but it's going to be released tomorrow. 
Not much talk about Windows Phone 7 lately. Do you think it's already too late for it to get a piece of the market? No, actually, we just got some more solid info on what the next big update to Windows Phone 7 will include, and it's big stuff, and it's definitely going to help Windows Phone 7. Um, this is the code name for this update is called Mango, and we're hearing it could come later in the year, towards the end of the year, maybe like quarter four, maybe beginning of next year. It's going to be so big that we're thinking uh, Microsoft is going to call it 7.5, so it's a big update. It's going to have Twitter integration in the People Hub, cloud sharing and storage, a new version of Internet Explorer, multitasking, huge, being audio, which is going to be sort of like Shazam, being vision, which will be basically a barcode scanner, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, podcast support, and SMS dictation. So huge update. And that, yes, I think will help a lot. No, I don't think it's too late. Um, so what about the Mavericks? I know, I'm, I'm really happy right now. Um, I'm a Mavericks fan, just in case you don't know, because I live in Dallas. And the Mavericks swept the Lakers, which was awesome. But now we have to face either the, uh, the Grizzlies or the Thunder. Looks like it's going to be the Thunder unless Memphis does something amazing. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know which one I would rather face, but, um, yeah, I'm excited. Okay, I missed a bunch of questions. And also, let me check Facebook. Let me switch back and forth. She's reading them from Ustream. Yeah, I'm trying to check Facebook every few minutes, so just be patient. Can you give my son a shout-out? His name is Logan, and he is watching with me right now. Hey, Logan, how's it going? Glad you guys could be here. Um, if you have any questions about anything, just ask it, and I'll try to answer um, when is the LG Optimus 3D coming? Let me see. <clears throat> LG Optimus 3D. Uh, T-Mobile has said that it is coming in the coming months. So I guess in a few months. That's very vague, but that's all the info I have. Hey, dumb question. You can put different browsers on Android, right? Yeah, you can. It comes with the stock Android browser, but when you go to the market, you can just do a search for browser, and uh, there's all kinds. I use Dolphin. I used Opera for a while because it was better than, um, I thought it was better than the stock Android browser, but then I started using Dolphin, and it's even better. But there's there's tons of options. Um, Stu is so that on tabs and smartphones, probably I'm a sad Lakers. <laughs> um, Evo 3D looks promising. Yeah, the Evo 3D, it's going to be one of the best phones of this year. Um, the Evo was one of the best phones of the year that it came out, and the Evo 3D, I think, is going to be one of the best phones of this year. I think the Samsung Galaxy S is going to be one of the best phones of this year, and the G2X. Um, those, are, those are the bee's knees. I don't even know what that means, but... Well, it means awesome, but I don't know why bees... They don't have knees. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah, the Merge. That's right. I was looking or when the merge was coming out. Um, HTC merge available from Verizon Retail Partners. Uh, when? I don't know. Let me see if I can get the date. Um, blah, blah, blah. HTC merge is now available. So the merge is available now from Verizon Retail Partners. So not official Verizon stores, but the retail partner stores, they're selling the merge now, I guess. I guess you can go to get it now. Um, I don't know why Verizon decided to do that, but they did. The Evo will obviously win bigger battery, more RAM, and 3D. Tech Dog depends on your reception, the phone, how many people are on the network. Simple answer is fast. Where do you ask? How fast is 4G? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, good, good point. Depends on your reception, the phone. And it also depends on the technology. You know, currently HSPA Plus, we have, you know, speeds that can go up to 21.1 megabits per second. And then we have, you know, LTE, which is, you know, slower, or WiMAX is slower. Um, so different technologies are faster, but also it just depends on where you're at. You know, I hear people say WiMAX is stupid and it's slow. And I have people saying WiMAX is awesome and it's fast, and they're just in different areas. Areas. I did a video on that on our phone in our Phone Dog 101 segment. You can search for it um, on if you go to PhoneDog.com and then search Phone Dog 101 4G. 
it's a video and it should be pretty helpful about that. Um, sorry you're spending so much time on me, but thanks a lot. You're welcome. Won't the 3D totally drain the battery? Well, you can turn it off. You don't always have to have the 3D. I think there's a there's a little slider on the side of it, and you can turn the 3D on and off. HSPA Plus yields real-world speeds about 4 to 6. You can turn it off. That's fast. G2X Gingerbread anytime soon, like T-Mobile said, or am I going to resort to rooting again? Uh, G2X Gingerbread. I don't have any info on that. Sorry. Um... I get a broadband update tomorrow. Awesome. You can turn 3D off by closing one eye. You could do that. That's that's an option. Okay, I missed a bunch of questions on Facebook. Um, let me see. How many did I miss? Okay, thanks. What are your thoughts on the sensation? Um, it's going to be sensational. I know, I know. That's, I had to. Um, no, I think the sensation, um, it's obviously an awesome phone. Is it the best phone on the market right now? You know, probably not. But, um, I mean, it definitely, I would say between that and uh, the G2X, I mean, those, you, you know, you can't really go wrong. Um, okay. There were rumors that Gingerbread for the Droid X was coming today, but nothing yet. Have you heard anything further? I No, I haven't. Sydney, what phone do you think is better, an Evo or a Galaxy S? Uh, that really... Between the original Evo and the original Galaxy S, it just depends on, in terms of specs, very similar. Um, the Galaxy S isn't a 4G device, um, but if you, know, if you take that out of the equation, the specs are pretty much the same. It really just depends on which UI you prefer, Sense versus TouchWiz. Uh, what phone, I don't know what Aaron personally uses. Sydney, what phone do you think is better in Evo? Okay, I just answered that. What are your thoughts about Microsoft buying Skype? Um, you know, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I heard people kind of had, um, you know, reservations about it and weren't too sure. They are kind of worried. Um, but it's, you know, I think people that were worried about it were Mac OS users. And, you know, Mac OS has a, a, a Skype app program. And they were thinking, oh, since Microsoft is buying it, are we still going to be able to use it? And the answer is yes, Microsoft is still going to continue to develop the Skype app for macOS. So um, not a big deal. I, it'll be great, obviously, for Windows Phone 7. Um, it should add you know, a lot of functionality to that. HTC is awesome, dude. What you talking about, Chris? <laughs> How do we ask questions on Facebook? Um, if you go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash phone dog, and then you click on Ustream, the Ustream tab, uh, it'll take you to the live feed, and then you can just, you have to be logged in, but you can just um, post a question. <clears throat> Where do you guys buy your phones at? Uh, we don't buy the phones that we review. Um, the companies send them to us. We get some from Best Buy Mobile. Some come directly from the manufacturer. Some come from the carrier, um, but we don't actually buy the phones. So they're not our personal phones. We send them back when we're done. Best Slick QWERTY keyboard Android on the market. Slick, I don't know it's slick, um, but QWERTY keyboard, uh, the best one on the market, I mean, besides BlackBerry, BlackBerry, you know, obviously has the best physical keyboards on the market, but um, besides that, um, I'd have to say, personally, from what I've used, you know, and what I've seen, um, I hear the sidekick you know, obviously they put a lot of time into that physical keyboard to the sidekick. Um, the G1, or not the G1, the G2, I, I've heard people say that that's the best physical keyboard. I don't really know about that. I've used it, and it's sort of just, you know, it's not my favorite, but I'm really picky about physical keyboards. Um, and then the keyboard on the Epic, um, I'd say, would be another one of the best physical keyboards. There's a lot of phones coming out with a physical keyboard, um, like the Merge that was just mentioned. That may have a better keyboard, you know, we really don't know, but um, those phones just haven't come out yet, so I don't know. What about me? I, okay, is Microsoft going to share the Windows Office features with other phones and tablet companies? I'm not sure. You're talking about Windows Office features with other phones and tablet companies. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but if I understand you correctly, the Office Live that's available on the Windows Phone 7 is not going to other phones or tablets like Android or anything like that. Um, 
Okay, I'm back to you stream now. Sorry if I missed questions. Oh my goodness, it's 4.59. We have a minute left. I'm going to get a drink anyway. Okay, um, yeah, we have a minute left, so we'll have to wrap it up. Um, two minute warning. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of assume that bigger is better, but I don't know that droid, the DHD, the Desire HD is hard to use with one finger and one hand. Which phone do you use day to day, Sydney? Honestly, I get asked, asked that a lot and it depends on which phone I'm it's reviewing. It's five o'clock. It's five o'clock, my computer just told me. Um, it just depends on which phone I'm reviewing. Um, how's your day going? It's going well. So, it's five o'clock, I have to, we gotta cut it off. Um, but thank you everybody for coming. I'm sorry if I missed your question, and I know I did. Um, there are a lot of questions and I just couldn't get to all of them. But thank you for coming. Um, I did record this, and so you can watch it later on on YouTube or on our Ustream channel. You can go there and watch it. I'll also be posting an article on PhoneDog.com that's going to have kind of a recap of everything we talked about. Um, but I'll see you guys next week at the same time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, on our Facebook page or on Ustream channel. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment, and I'll be checking the comments on YouTube, and then I'll try to answer the ones that I can. Uh, your PC lied. Um, but anyway, I have to go. But thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.